All right, so in this spell work here, we are going to be looking at these two equations. This one says 2 to the power of x, and this one says 1 half to the power of x. Now, you're going to be filling out these tables. I've already pre-selected what x values you'll be plugging into the equation. And then you'll have to find out the y values because this table will help us get some points, coordinate points on these graphs so we can plot them and see what the curve looks like or see what this graph looks like. All right, so let's start with plugging in 0 in for this x here. So this is going to look like we have 2 to the 0 power, and then the next one be 1 to the 2 to the 1 power, and then the next one's 2 to the second power. So take a moment and you can plug this in a calculator and get a number. So see if you can grab these numbers. So 2 to the 0 power or anything to the 0 power is just 1. 2 to the first power, anything to the first power is itself, so this is 2. And then 2 to the second power is like saying 2 times 2, which is 4, so this answer is 4. So it looks like this here is my uh, y values. So looking at the graph here, this is at 0, 1, so I'm going to plot it at 0, up 1. It's going to be right here on the graph. The next one here I have at 1, 2, so 1, up 2. And next I have it at 2, 4. So this is 2 and then up 4, so right about there. And I'm going to draw a line to connect them. And so if you were here in one of the class periods um, before this journal, you might have remembered me talking about how this curve kind of glides above the x-axis but doesn't really touch it. Okay, so the curve that is this function here, um, basically, on the right side, it's going to go up, 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 because as you increase the x or the exponent, this is going to increase rapidly, whereas this side here starts to flatten out. And I want us to take a note on this flattening out. So notice how it starts to flatten out on the x-axis. So this is the x-axis, but it's also where y equals 0. Notice on the x-axis, that's when y equals 0. So this curve is getting really, really close to y equals 0. So as x becomes more and more negative, it's getting closer to y equals 0. Or it's getting really close to a very small number. For this one here, um, it has a 1 half. So let's see what happens when we plug in these x values. So we have 1 half to the 0 power. Anything to 0 power is just 1. 1 half to the first power is just itself, so just 1 half. And then we have 1 half to the second power. That's like saying 1 half times 1 half. If you multiply straight across, it would be 1 over 4. So this is 1 fourth. And so these are, our, these are our y values that correspond to our x coordinate. So this one is at 0, 1. So 0, 1, I'm going to plot that right there. And then the next one's at 1 half. So 1's here up a half. It's about right there. And then this is 2, 1 fourth. So 2's right here. And then 1 fourth is about a teeny tiny bit above the 2. And then if I graph, this graph is actually going to glide above the x-axis. And then the other side just goes up, up. So this one here has kind of like as x becomes greater, as x goes to positive infinity, notice how the graph flattens out. And that's because as it flattens out, it's heading towards the x-axis. And we said that if a, a curve is heading towards the x-axis, then it's heading towards y equals 0. So this one kind of is like opposite from that one. I mean, you look at the graph. They're kind of like mirror image of each other. Um, this one is going to be curving downwards as it flattens out. This one's going to be curving upwards. Um, so this is what we call a growth because it, um, you know, continues on growing pretty aggressively on the right side. So this is what we call a growth, where the other one we call a decay because it starts to decline and flatten out on the other side. All right, we're going to talk more about these here in the next slide, but let's go over some definitions here first and build some vocabulary. 
Okay, so let's talk about exponential function. In today's lesson, I'm going to be talking to you guys about what if we make x the exponent and the base a number. Now, we're used to seeing the x being a base and the exponent being a number, right? Like you've seen these in your you know, homework. But today, the question is, what if I switched it around? What if I made the, the two here my base, or the three here my base, or the four here my base, and x the exponent? What if I did that? How would that graph look like? And so we're going to answer that question today. So b here um, is the one that's holding the x or the exponent. So we call this the base. Um, k here, or the number that is going to be added or subtracted off of the equation, sometimes we call this the vertical shift, but in this scenario, we're going to refer to that as something called the horizontal asymptote. And I'll talk more about that when I draw you guys a picture, but this number will help us figure out the horizontal asymptote. And then um, you guys might recall that there is an f of x here. f of x is just, you know, another way we can describe y. Okay, so you'll see me switch from saying f of x or y. And then um, a here is just not terribly important, but it's just like the coefficient. And it's to describe the steepness. But I won't go into that too much. All right, so um, for, for basically, if you have a b that is greater than 1, if you have a base that is greater than 1, you will know it's a growth. So what I mean is using the example from the bell work, that when you had the y equals 2 to the x power, we called this one a growth. Well, it's because your b here is, so your base here, is a 2, and 2 happens to be greater than 1. So I can easily figure out, oh, this is a growth because, well, the base here is a 2, and it's bigger than 1. Um, and so remember when we drew this graph here, it kind of looked like the right side was growing and the left-hand side was starting to flatten out. But I was talking about how the line was flattening out on the x-axis. Right, so this is the x-axis, where y is equal to 0. So let me explain to you why that's the case. Notice how in the uh, template here, the number that is outside or next to the base that's either being added on or subtracted on is the horizontal asymptote. Now, there's no number out here. So by default, it's probably a plus 0, right? If I add 0 to it, nothing will change to the equation. So it must have been a plus 0. Well, that means that the horizontal asymptote, I'll just call it HA, the horizontal asymptote must have been 0. And that makes sense because in this case, y equals 0. That tells me that the horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals 0, and it is. So horizontal asymptotes, if you look at this curve and the way it behaves, horizontal asymptotes basically act as this line, this invisible line that's there where it blocks the curve from passing it. In other words, a horizontal asymptote can never be touched by a curve. It gets really darn close to it, or it like glides above it, but it can never touch it. So this curve is going to glide above it, or sometimes below it, but never cross the horizontal asymptote. So horizontal asymptotes are these like invisible lines that curves do not cross. They'll get really close to it, but never cross. So let me show you with this example here using the bell work. So the other equation was y equals 1 half to the x, right? And notice how this base here is a 1 half. So if the base is basically a number between 0 and 1, like 1 half, right, then you know it's a decay. So decay means that as x progresses, it starts to flatten out. So in this graph here that we drew, we notice that the curve started to flatten out as x went to the right. And this was supposed to happen. And also, this one here is, also has a, um, a horizontal asymptote at 0, right? Because there's no number out there. So that's why it starts to flatten on the x-axis when y equals 0. So that there is our horizontal asymptote. 
All right, so basically what I want you guys to do first when you get an equation is to look at the base and figure out is this going to be a growth or is this going to be a decay? The next thing I want you guys to do is be able to detect is this going to give you like is there a horizontal asymptote? Where would that be located? All right, let's do two examples together in this journal and then we'll get into the homework problems if you want to stay longer for that. Okay, so in this problem here, you have 4, 2x, minus 5. So the base here is the number that's holding the x. So the 2 here is my base. And notice how this base is bigger than 1. So because 2 is bigger than 1, I know that this is a growth. So anytime your b here is bigger than 1 or greater than 1, then it's a growth. So I'm just going to write growth here. And then in this case, the asymptote, the asymptote is the number that's next to the base. So this base is a negative 5 that's next to it. So the horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative 5. Now, when you write the horizontal asymptote, you're going to take the number and you always write the equation as y equals, okay? It's always y equals that number. And that's because it produces a horizontal line. So when you have a horizontal asymptote, make sure you draw it. And I like to use a dashed line to draw a horizontal asymptote. Because in this case, it's like technically not a solid line. It's like this invisible line. So I, I like to use a dashed line. So here's my horizontal asymptote. And it's at y, I'll just put it here, y equals negative 5. I like to label. And then let's start to draw this curve. So to draw the curve, you need to make a table. And you're going to choose some x values to plug in. Now, you can choose whatever x values you want. I'm just going to keep it real simple and choose some small numbers like 0, 1, and 2. Because you'll have to plug them in to figure out the y. Kind of like our bell work. So, when I plug in the 0, right, 2 to the 0 power is 1. And so, if I multiply 4 and 1, I get a 4 minus 5. So in this case, I have a negative 1. So it looks like at 0, oops, at 0, I'm plugging it at negative 1. So that would be right about here, which is also on the y-axis, right? So that point is actually our y-intercept as well. So I'm going to fill that out. So that's why I like to plug in 0, because you have to usually find the y-intercept anyways. So might as well just put that on your chart to plug in. So that's why I always like to plug in 0. So the next one here, I'm going to plug in 1. If I plug in 1, this is 2 to the first power, which is 2. So 4 times 2 is actually 8 minus 5, which is 3. So 3 here is for 1. So 1, 3. So 1 up 3 should be right here. And last but not least, if I plug in 2, 2 to the second power is 4. So this is going to be 4 times 4 minus 5. 4 times 4 is 16 minus 5 is 11. So I'm going to have to extend my curve here. And I'll just do this by extending my axis and, you know, labeling it at 11. You don't have to be perfect here, but I do want to see the label. So at 2, 11, 2 up 11. I'm going to plot my point, and then I'm going to connect the dots. Now, I can definitely see on the right side here, it is curving up. But on the left side, I need to move in the opposite direction. So I'm going to be curving down for sure. But as I curve down, I also need to curve to the side because as it approaches the horizontal asymptote, I can't cross it. So I have to flatten out to kind of accommodate the space here. So looking at this, notice how this arrow here, when you drew it, because it flattened out, it's pointing to the left. And if it's pointing to the left, this is going to negative, negative infinity for the x value. And then this side here is pointing up, but it's pointing to the right, right? So if it's pointing to the right, this is going to go to positive infinity. So it's going from negative infinity to positive infinity. That means the domain is all real numbers. In fact, for every exponential function, they are always all real numbers for the domain. For the range, 
the range here has some limitations. Notice how this curve goes up with an arrow, right? So that means it's going to positive infinity. But this curve doesn't always extend down, right? So as you go downwards, it starts to flatten out because it can't pass y equals negative 5. So in this case, it only can go from negative 5 to positive infinity. So negative 5 to positive infinity. And we're going to use a parentheses on the infinity. But for the negative 5, this is a horizontal asymptote. And I can't touch that. So just like infinity, we can't touch. Horizontal asymptotes, we can't touch either. So we have to use a parentheses. So there we have our graph. We filled out the questions here. And that's it. So first thing you'll need to do is always figure out the base so you can figure out what type it is, growth or decay. Then you're going to figure out the horizontal asymptote and then draw the horizontal asymptote. And then third, you're going to make a little chart where you choose some x values and plot some points. So I would always say try to plot at least three points. It just helps with the accuracy a little bit better. All right, let's do another example before we get into the homework. Okay, so in this one here, I have a base that's one half. So here's my base. And so if the base is 1 half, that tells me that this is a decay. So a decay is basically any number where the base is between 0 and 1. So in this case, that applies since 1 half is between 0 and 1. Our horizontal asymptote looks like it's at negative 2 or y equals negative 2 because you have to write a y. And so I'm going to draw a dashed line at y equals negative 2. And then looking at this here, I'm going to be drawing some points or plotting some points here because I need to figure out where is the other point so I can graph this curve. So I'm going to pick my favorite three numbers, 0, 1, and 2. So if I plug in 0 into this equation, this is going to be 4, 1 half, 0, minus 2. If I plug in the next equation, 1 half, 1, 2, I'm just setting this up. So the first equation, I have 1 half to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is just 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Minus 2 is a 2. So the first number is going to be a 2. The second number, if I plug in 1, this is going to be like 1 half to the first power. So it's just it's 1 half. So if you take 4 times 1 half, you're basically halving 4. So that's like a 2. So 2 minus 2 gives me 0. So I'm going to get a 0 back. Then this one here, 1 half to the second power, we saw this in the bell work. Um, 1 half to the second power is 1 fourth. And if you multiply 4 with 1 fourth, they actually just end up being 1, okay? Because if you multiply, the 4s will kind of cancel. Um, so this will end up being 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. So... In this scenario, we have it at 0, 2, so 0 up 2. 0, 2 also happens to be the y-intercept because it does hit the y-axis, so 0, 2 is my y-intercept. And then the next one here is at 1, 0, so right there. And then 2, negative 1 is right here. So I'm going to graph and connect the dots to create my curve. And I notice that the as I connected them, this started sloping down. And if I keep sloping down, I'm going to hit the the horizontal asymptote, so I have to flatten out. Whereas this side, I can move up, and I'm gonna just follow the path that it was creating, so it's kind of moving up on the other side. So again, domain's gonna be all real numbers. You can see that this side is pointing to the right, so it's going to positive infinity, whereas this side here is pointing to the left, so it's going to negative infinity. So domain is all real numbers. Whereas the range, there's some restriction here. This points up, right? So it's going to positive infinity for the y. But as I head on down, the lowest y value that it can be is at negative 2. So this goes from negative 2 to positive infinity since we always write low to high. And we're going to use parentheses because that's an asymptote. So I can't touch it and that's infinity and I can't touch it. All right, so hopefully this is starting to click. Um, let's do a couple more homework problems. I'm going to do two and three from the homework, so if you want to follow along in the next slide. 
All right, so this one is the first page of the packet. I'm gonna start with this problem here. Um, this problem has a base of four. So four is the one that's holding the X, so that's how I know it's the base. And four is bigger than one. So whenever the, the B or the base is bigger than one, this is a growth. Whenever B is between zero and one, this is a decay. So we have a growth for sure here, write that in. And then a horizontal asymptote looks like it's going to be at two or Y equals two. So I'm gonna draw that on the graph here using some dash lines. So horizontal asymptote at two. And then I have a, uh, I need to make the curve. So I need to start with my table. So this is X, zero, one, and two. I'm gonna figure out my Y. So if I plug zero into this equation, this is gonna be negative four, sorry, negative three times four to the zero power plus two. So four to the zero power is just one, right? If I multiply negative three with one, I get negative three plus two, which gives me um, negative one as my first value. And then the next one, I'm going to do it for the rest. Plug in one. Anything to the first power is just itself. So 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 plus 2, which is negative 10. And then last but not least, if I plug in 2, in for x, this is going to be 4 squared, which is 16. If you multiply 16 with negative 3, you get negative 48 plus 2, which is negative 46. So when I look at this, I have to plot 0, negative 1. So 0, negative 1 is right here. Plot that. And then this is 1, negative 10. So that's going to be, oops, 1 right there. Negative 10 is like far down. So I'm going to extend this graph and mark this as negative 10. And you can do that. And then the next one here is going to be at negative 46. I can already see the y value is really big. And it's at 2. So like right there. So this is going to be sloping downwards. We can see. And then this side here has to curve up because it has to go in the opposite direction. But it has to flatten out because it doesn't, uh, it can't touch that horizontal asymptote. So it's going to start to flatten out. Now in this case here, you can see it is pointing um left and it is pointing right but downwards so in this case this is all real numbers for domain like i said every exponential function the domain is all real numbers um the y-intercept that's going to be at zero negative one right it's right there or right there on my chart the range here notice how like this is pointing down right so if it's pointing down it's heading towards negative infinity so if it's going from negative infinity, and then it's going to go up, 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 the highest y value that it can reach is y equals 2. So this goes from negative infinity, the lowest y value, to the highest, which is positive 2. And I'm going to put parentheses since um, in this scenario I can't touch infinity and I can't touch 2 because that's a horizontal asymptote. Now, I just want to take a moment to kind of look at this graph together. Notice how this growth is different. This growth points downwards. This is what we call a negative growth because it's still a very extreme, aggressive kind of growing, but it's in the negative direction. And that's perfectly fine. It just basically tells you like the number in front. The reason why is because the number in front of the exponent is a negative number. So that's why it's going down rather than going up. So if it was a positive number, it'd be increasing uh, really aggressively in the positive direction. All right, let's do one more here. So this one, let's check out our base. Our base here is a four, one fourth. So that tells me that this is a decay because one fourth is a number between zero and one. So we definitely have a decay. We have a horizontal asymptote at negative six. So Let's draw that on the graph. I'm going to put some dashed lines down here. And then we need to make our chart. So let's start making our chart. So I'm going to plug in 0, 1, and 2, you know, the traditional. So 
if I work this out, this is going to be 1, right? 1 fourth is 0 power, just 1. So 5 times 1 is just 5. Minus 6 gives me negative 1. So that's the first number. So um, if I do the next one, this is going to be oops, 5, 1 fourth to the first power, minus 6. Well, 1 fourth to the first power is still itself. So 5 times 1 fourth, I'm going to put this in the calculator and just do five, uh, 1 fourth in the calculator, which also happens to be 0, let me change that, there we go. 0 0.25. So if I take 0 0.25 and multiply it by 5, I get about 1.5. If I subtract 6 from it, I get negative 4.75. So in this case, let me start already plotting here. This First coordinate is 0, negative 1, which is like the y-intercept. So this is 0, negative 1, which is right here. 0, negative 1. Then the next point here is at 1, 4, negative 4, 7, 5. So that's right here. And notice how these points are getting closer to the horizontal asymptote. Let's see if the next point gets really close. So this is going to be 5, 1 fourth to the second power minus 6. So if I have 1 fourth to the second power, that's like 1 over 16. But let me just do that in the calculator here. So if I take basically 0.25, 1 fourth, and I square it, I get 0 0.625. So I'm going to multiply 5 with 0 0.625 and get this number. 0.3125. I'm going to subtract that from 6 and I get negative 5.6875. Like I said, you can definitely round here. So that point would be right below um, negative 6 or above negative 6. So maybe here. So I can definitely see that this is starting to flatten out on the right side, whereas the other side is growing. So this is a decay, as you can see, as x becomes more and more positive. This is going to be flattening out, but it's flattening out to the right, so it's heading towards positive infinity. And the x-axis, this is pointing to the left in the right direction, so this is going to negative infinity. So the domain, like I said, always all real numbers. The range here has some restriction. So the lowest y value that this can be is this horizontal asymptote, which is when y equals negative 6. So the lowest it can be is negative 6. The highest, well, it has an arrow here, so it can go on to infinity. So it goes from negative 6 to infinity with parentheses. And that's it. You have your curve here. So I highly recommend that you use the calculator. It might help you out to do these problems. Um, but that's it for this journal. Hope that helps you out with your homework. Bye, guys.